Hi everyone and welcome to episode number four of our Config Mess 2022. My name is Johan and in this demo you will learn how to enable remote desktop using Microsoft Intune. So in my lab environment I have 30 some machines that are all joined into Azure AD and I simply want to be able to remote into them using a remote desktop and also using a remote desktop manager that I like. So demo time. First of all, it's important to know that Azure AD Join Machines behaves a little bit different from a remote desktop point of view. I have highlighted here two of the documentation notes saying that if you're using an older server OS, you actually need to allow a certain policy on the devices for this to work, or if you're using an Azure AD group to assign permissions for the remote desktop group, you also need to disable the uh, network level authentication that is enabled by default in Windows. So depending on your scenario a little bit, you may have to configure one, two, or three different settings. So let's go over to my Intune tenant. What I have created here is a simple device configuration profile. I'm gonna review the settings for it. I'm using the settings catalog because the settings catalog has all these three settings that I can assign. So if I go down to settings, click edit, I can show you them quickly. So this is how they are configured. I have disabled NLA and I'm allowing users to actually connect through remote desktop. And then I have that special policy for allowing servers or older servers to connect to Azure AD join machines. Now, in addition to this policy, I also need to configure the firewall. So I need to enable port 3389 by default and to these machines. And firewall policies in Intune, you can configure in a lot of different ways. There are no ready-made options to simply enable and toggle the like default groups, default profiles that you have in Windows, but it's fairly easy to do either through a script or you can do it through a regular uh, device configuration profile. If you create a new one, you pick a platform, you pick a type, endpoint protection, for example, give it a name. And in here, there is an option to configure the firewall, and it also allow you to configure various rules from here. But I prefer to use the firewall settings directly under endpoint security instead. So if I close this one here and head over here and go to firewall, I have configured a profile here. And if you take a look at that profile, I go down to the firewall rules here. I have configured one single rule called allow remote desktop. Network type, and this is important. I have configured this one for a private type profile also, all, only in Windows or only in this setting. And this is interesting because when you join an Intune machine or join a machine into Azure AD, it will get the public profile by default unless you specify otherwise. And the twist to this is that the normal user, standard user, not an admin, cannot change the profile type. I'll show you that in a little bit. But other than that, I have enabled port 3389. And um, I have it configured it to protocol number six, which is TCP IP. So it says right here, number six. So that's what I have done. And these policies have been applied to the machines. It's been available for, for a few hours here now. Now the fun part is if I go to one of my machines, like um, this one here, I'm gonna connect to it and log in. And I'm gonna log in so like a normal user, not an admin. I can't even remote into the remote desktop because this user is not part of that group. But I can go ahead and um, log into the console.
And if I go to my network settings, go to properties, I try to change this. I won't be able to as a normal user. So what you need to change this connection type easily is a Jürgen. Because Jürgen Nilsson wrote a blog post a little while back on how to use a PowerShell script to detect when the network is the right one and if it is, switch over to a private network. So this is a script that you deploy as a Win32 app in Intune. It creates a scheduled task on the machine and that scheduled task has two filters or triggers where it simply detects when someone logs in and it will detect when the network changes or connects. And then it simply runs a script that switches the network. So I have deployed this in my environment and I will share this link here underneath the video. Now, if I go back to my machine and log in as a admin instead, so I'm gonna switch over to Amy's account. I'm gonna flip over to here so I get a little better view or screen resolution. Here is the scheduled task that has been created. If I do properties in this one, you can see there are these two triggers. If I check that trigger and edit it, go to edit event filter, you will see that this particular trigger does indeed look for a connection, meaning 10,000, the event ID, as well as that network. So that means if I go over to my event log, sure enough, I have these type of events and that means that action will kick in and it's going to launch this script, switch firewall or switch firewall PS1. If I open that script, this is where you can place additional checks that are matching your environment. For example, if you can reach this particular resource, then go ahead and switch it over to private. But again, I'm simply switching it over to private when one of these action kicks in. But just to show you the difference here, if I flip this one back to public and go over to a PowerShell prompt on my host, and then I can try to do a net test connection to that device on port 3389. And since I have flipped the profile now over to public, the firewall that I created in Intune won't apply. And this should now fail. And sure enough, it failed. Just to show you here, if I run a get network connection profile or net connection profile, it's still public. If I go ahead and run that scheduled task, it's running, should finish very, very shortly. It's ready. I can check again. It's now back to private. And if I do my test here one more time, this time it should succeed. Happiness. Now, Fun part is, if you try to figure out what Intune has configured in terms of firewall rule policy, they can be a little bit tricky to find. Because if I do the following, uh, let me bring up a new prompt. If I try to just list the firewall rules that have the display name allow remote in them, or the, in the name, I will see absolutely nothing. Because there are different stores in Windows for policies. So in order to see these, I will actually have to tell it that I want to watch the active store. So dash policy store, active store, and then the same display name. And sure enough, it shows that that rule has been applied and it will tell me that the source for this particular rule was MDM. 
Now it becomes interesting, how do I remote into this? Because if I go over to say my original server here and just open up an um, RDP connection like this one or the remote desktop client and I type in the name of the VM that I configured and I try to connect to it. Come to credentials, I will type in the Azure AE credentials that you have to use for this. Type in the password. And you actually have to spell Azure AD correctly. But either way, this is going to fail. Does not like it. I did type in the right password, but it didn't like it. What you need to do is actually save this as an RDP file. And then you need to modify that RDP file. So what I have done here in this folder I have saved an RDP file. I'm going to open it up in Notepad or Notepad++. The things that you need to configure is the authentication level. That one is usually right by default these days, but this one needs to be set to this, like here. And the other one is cred SSP. That one is not enabled by default. So if I go back here, search for cred SSP, I have added that one in and I have also added in the username. That means if I close this one, I should now be able to remote in to this device using the same password. Perfect. Now, also, if you are using this remote desktop manager here from um, Devolutions, which is a great desktop manager for um, for all sorts of devices, but I, I use it primarily for Windows. But anyway, if I would just create a new entry here and try to remote into, it's going to fail, even though it actually does have options in it for an Azure AD host. But what you have to do if you want to use this tool is that you have to go here and you need to import session from, and then you pick the RDP file that you previously created. In this case, I had one over here in demo, in tune. That was not in tune. This one here. And once we import that one, sure enough, you'll be able to remote into Azure AD join machines from this one as well. So, a few different things to think about. The most problematic one is the public and private profiles for machines joined to Azure AD only. It's not like when you have a machine joined to a legacy active directory where they automatically get the domain profile. There is no such thing in Intune. So Jurgen's solution there with a the scheduled task is actually quite elegant to force a machine to join a private profile when the conditions are right for that machine. That was all for today. Thank you so much for joining and I hope I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Have a good day.